I'd like to talk about uh, 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 some symmetry called the CPT symmetry and uh, in a minimum extension of the standard. Model. I have been working on this subject, not always, but on and off uh, for a couple, several years in the past, in particular uh, together with the people in Helsinki. And so uh, I'm going to talk about this subject based on these two, mainly based on these two papers. Uh, before I start the uh, talk, I just mentioned my uh, personal encounters with Professor Salam. And my first uh, encounter with Salam, sorry, I just say Salam, okay, just Professor. Uh, my first encounter with Salam was uh, uh, at a small gathering in the suburb of Oxford in 72. I was a postdoc at that time, uh, postdoc uh, at Cambridge, and I attended. And this was a nice gathering, uh, small, nice uh, old house. And uh, Feldman talked about with uh, Professor Tohoff here. Yeah? And I also talked on work with ben Benjamin D. Uh, he passed away when he was young. Uh, but uh, anyway, at this meeting, uh, Salam was saying that if you insist on simplicity, then Newton's theory would have been much simpler than Einstein's theory, which requires, for example, Jimmy New, 10 variables like that. But uh, we prefer Einstein's uh, theory because of symmetry. So Salam was saying symmetry is really essential, so the uh, superficial uh, simplicity uh, is not the uh, um, fundamental, but rather symmetry is more important. And my second encounter with Salam was at the Tokyo High Energy Conference in 78. And I served as a secretary of the session of electroweak unification together with Harald Fitch, I don't know if he's a Fitch here, but, uh, and uh, Alta Reilly. Because this is a typical Japanese, Japanese way, because we had a so-called pre-conference in Kyoto. We had a conference in Tokyo. And, uh, we looked at all the submitted papers and uh, you know, sorties and so on, that kind of thing. And uh, <coughs> at that conference, I, I talked to Salam, and the main speaker was uh, Weinberg on this electronic unification. But uh, the, uh, at this uh, meeting, uh, because of the piety violation of the slack experiment and so on, so uh, Weinberg, Salam, Gracio type theory uh, was uh, favored favored and uh, they received Nobel Prize one year later. Also later, uh, I attended a couple of workshops at uh, Trieste in 1980s when uh, Professor Salam was alive. <coughs> but that was a uh, very nice uh, atmosphere. And uh, at least uh, at the beginning of the workshop, Professor uh, Salam came there and gave some introductory uh, talks and so on. But anyway, uh, these are more or less all of my personal uh, encounters with Professor Salam. So now I come to the physics. And uh, the, uh, probably the uh, greatest contribution of Professor Salam is the proposal of the, the standard model, namely Weinberg Salam uh, Gracio uh, model, among his numerous contributions to physics. And uh, the uh, standard model uh, is uh, uh, very successful so far. And uh, people discuss the possible extensions of the model. And in my talk, I would like to discuss CPT symmetry in a minimal extension of the standard model. Minimal means only right-handed neutrino is added. And uh, emphasize the relevance of the test of CPT breaking in neutrino oscillation experiments. <coughs> So CPT theorem was uh, said, uh, proposed by Pauli and uh, Judas and so on. Uh, CPT symmetry is uh, valid for any Lorentz invariant local theory with normal spin statistics and Hamishan Langlandian. So this means almost all the Langlandians we write uh, satisfy this. And uh, therefore, the uh, to break it, uh, local and Lorentz invariant, so a necessary condition 
イザトあ,あとサムスケール、like、フランクスケールフランクあノンローカルセオリーあとですねワンドザコンディションとポルコアローレンツブレイキングあ実はセカンドチョイスはもうコモンアマングザワーカーズインディスフィールバトアイムゴイトコンセントでノンローカルセオリー<笑>あのじゃあ、to understand what CPT is I know the title of Luders あ this is a Luders original paper and that this title is a you know shows what CPT theory means namely what he says is a time reversal is equivalent to particle anti particle but then this is a before Lee and Yang therefore parity is assumed to be preserved so nowadays people We should say T is equivalent to PT, CP is equivalent to T. That is a CPT theorem. But CPT theorem implies a mass of the particles and antiparticles, and that is a very profound implication of the CPT theorem. But I'm going to discuss how to break it. And therefore, a possible CPT violation breaking. And the conventional argument is that, uh, for example, typical one is maybe uh, Greenbank paper. And the argument is that the CPT violation inevitably violates Lorentz symmetry violation. But uh, this argument is uh, uh, CPT valid theory is very well defined axiomatically. But uh, after breaking, uh, not specified. Therefore, there are many loop folds, so called. And for example, there are many counter examples. One counter example by, by these people. And therefore, non local Lorentz invariant theory can give CPT breaking. Of course, if we break CPT in a non local way, then unitarity has uh, some problem. <laughs> but uh, uh, at least we can break it. Therefore, this theorem says that's not allowed, but actually, you can break. CPT by local way. For example, uh, one specific uh, example, okay. uh, you can see that, uh, for example, this is a Yukawa type theory. And if you add this last term, uh, this is you know, a constraint to that time like separation. Therefore, this and this step function combined have the Lorentz invariant meaning, but of course, non local. And therefore, because, because of this factor, we consider only the half of the space, therefore, I said, half of the time coordinate. This is always uh, after the, this one, uh, fermions and so on. Therefore, T violating. But C and P are preserving. Therefore, CPT is violating. So this is a very rather uh, trivial way of yeah, this. But uh, if you do this way, then no mass splitting appears because C is preserved by this procedure. Therefore, if you want to, have them to avoid the mass, mass degeneracy, you have to break C, CP, CPT, everything at a time. And so uh, I'm going to discuss that, that kind of model. <coughs> so model is, uh, uh, by the way, do you have any, this one is not, Working, but anyway, I go. Uh, for example, if you com consider this kind of, of uh, very, uh, this is by the Hamishan. Ham this is very, Hamishan is very important uh, in the analysis of the CPT. And uh, if you consider kind of, the, kind of uh, pure imaginary mass term, this term does not appear in the ordinary Lagrangian because if you uh, impose the hermeticity, then this kind of term go away. Uh, but uh, in this combination, you can keep it because this is a perfect Hamishan. And uh, Lorentz uh, invariant because we have the uh, time-like constraint, therefore step functions have the uh, Lorentz invariant meaning. And if you look at this imaginary mass term, then C, P, T has uh, this kind of transformation property, namely charge conjugation. Uh, uh, even parity is also even time reversal because of anti uh, uni 
そこアンティミタイザイクティあイマイナにアイインギブマイナス。じゃあ、こう、バトイフ、ウィハブサムエクストラワンインフロント。そう、ディスワンコンバインド。あオーバールトランスフォーメーションプロパティーザ C、CP、CPT、イザー、エブリシングズマイナス。エブリシングズオッド。Therefore, if you add to this kind of term to the this kind of、uh, Dirac Langlandian, then there's no way to ensure the、uh, particular antiparticle because C and CP, CPT are all、uh, broken. And this model was proposed、uh, in this、uh, reference. And、uh, I'm going to explain、uh, how to see. So, what I'm going to do is、uh, to solve the Dirac equation, add to this one. And just add direct deed. We look for that positive solution, negative solution, and we find that they are not degenerate in the magnitude. Therefore, the,、uh, this is、uh, the modified direct equation, first one. And if you make the answer like this, then this equation becomes this. And here I introduce the Lorentz invariant form factor, namely this one combines the step function, and this one plus and minus, plus and minus. So two、uh, form factors are induced. By the way, this one has the same structure as a two point white man function with a pre scalar theory. And、uh, that kind of knowledge is sometimes convenient. But,、uh, <coughs> But anyway, therefore, we have the in momentum space P slash T is equal to M is a Dirac equation. We have some extra one. And we use the Lorentz invariant of form factor as it. And we can confirm that in the、um, space like separation,、uh, if you choose a P0 equal to zero, Then the,、uh, this the form function becomes equal. Therefore, they completely cancel. And this here, okay? So we have a minus, f plus minus, f minus. Therefore, if f plus becomes equal to f minus, then that time goes away. That means no touch on the generator. And therefore, time like p, we go to the frame for p, p equals momentum zero. Only p zero is a size, size. Then this is a direct equation. Modify this one. And in this equation, if you insert P0 equal to minus P0, then you come to here. For example, this is an odd function. But the sign, because we have the two exponential functions difference, there will s i g n function appears. And、uh, the minus. Then if you sandwich by this by gamma 5, you come to here. If you compare this one and this, then you recognize the minus here. This means if P0 is a solution of this one, then minus P0 cannot be the solution because we have the different equation. By this way, we generate the、uh, mass splitting of the、uh, positive solution and negative solution in a Lorentz invariant way. So, last term in the Lagrangian with C, CP, CPT, everything minus, split the particle and anti particle masses. And that's a very crude estimate.、Uh, if you make the iterative solution, namely, <coughs>、uh, if you set the、uh, P0 inside here by just、uh, the、uh, first order solution, and so on, then the,、uh, we get the,、uh, this solution. Therefore, if you choose this as a particle solution, then Antiparticle solution is plus. Therefore, they are no more degenerate. So, by this way, we can generate the、uh, particle or antiparticle you know, mass splitting in a Lorentz invariant way. <coughs> so, I'm going to discuss this one to apply to the standard model. And in particular,、uh, analyze the Newton mass. And the Newton mass is、uh, very small. And the Newtonian oscillations are very sensitive to small mass and mass splitting. So, we are going to the,、uh, test this kind of the,、uh, splitting based on the Newtonian experiment. 
And that's maybe worthwhile to examine the possible neutrino antimatter splitting as a signal of possible CPT breaking in the standard model. Of course, CPT is a very secret symmetry, so not easy to break, but uh, at least we can test. And uh, from now on, uh, the, uh, my talk is based on this uh, paper. <coughs> so we introduce CPT breaking uh, interaction into the uh, neutrino mass sector of a minimal extension of the standard model. But because standard model, therefore, we want to preserve, first of all, Lorentz invariant. And the standard model means SU2 cos U1 gauge invariant. And because you make non-local, then unitarity becomes subtle. So we make the non-local within the distance of Frank length, for example. Also, to generate mass and anti -mass, anti particle antiparticle mass splitting, we have to break everything, C, CP, CPT. So I'm going to show that a very simple uh, scheme uh, gives this kind, satisfy this kind of scheme. Uh, so. And the fact we show that the sizable neutrino anti neutron mass splitting is possible. Possible sizable means uh, slightly smaller than observed neutrino mass. Model. And that induced electron positron mass splitting, for example, is language small. Because uh, if you introduce the uh, CPT break into the neutrino sector, then that effect uh, affects the electron positron splitting. Then if you have the sizable splitting, then you are finished. So you, you have to generate a very small uh, electron positron mass splitting. So model is this. Uh, this is a celebrated uh, Weinberg Salam uh, model. And uh, uh, assume assumption that uh, in addition to the original Weinberg Salam, I add a new R. Therefore, this kinetic term and uh, this uh, so called Majorana term, these are added. But things with the doublet are, are the same. So everything is the same as a, a standard model. So we tend to be set to MR equals zero with the enhanced lepton number symmetry, namely Dirac type of neutron. Although you can add a very small Majorana one is OK, but a big Majorana one uh, masks the uh, effect I, I'm going to discuss, therefore, not easy. So for the moment, I work with the Dirac. That means every mass comes from the observed Higgs doublet. Uh, this does not couple to the Higgs doublet as its sun. <coughs> So I'm going to add the, uh, this uh, non CPT breaking term. And uh, this uh, structure is the same as uh, before I discussed the uh, toy model from the uh, mass splitting. But in the case of the Weinberg Salam theory, we, you have to keep the gauge symmetry. But uh, left handed and Higgs combination are the SU2 cross U1 gauge invariant because new R is a, a singlet under this. So this preserves the uh, SU2 cross U1 gauge invariance, Lorentz invariance, and everything. And uh, I now add the local factor, non-local factor here. This is, again, time-like separation. But now take the difference of it. Previously, I used only one of them. But I take the difference of it. Then, we are looking at you know, light cone and some kind of the uh, uh, region of the light cone like this thing. But uh, I'm going to take this one zero and this one Planck length. Then effectively, I'm going to show that uh, only the tip of the light cone around there, uh, we have only the non-locality. So non-locality is very much well controlled by this way. And this one is, a, again, uh, same construction. Therefore, C, CPT, and C, C, CP, and CPT break. But we go to the unitary gauge to see physics. Then the, uh, this part is a Higgs coupling. Therefore, Higgs particle has, a, again, a very small CPT breaking interaction. But anyway, uh, this is a parity violating mass term appears uh, because uh, uh, one bank salam says the parity violating theory. But this one, this combination with the structure is the same as the 
Uh, by the way, first line is a just a standard model. Okay? So, okay. Second line is a uh, new one, and that has the same pro structure as uh, we discussed before. Namely, break C, C, P, and C, P, T. Therefore, if we add this one, then you can hope for the uh, mass splitting between uh, neutrino and anti neutrino. And this uh, last one is a piety violating one. This preserves C and the CPT, so this is not important, but the uh, second line is uh, very important. So, again, by uh, taking the ANSAT and we solve a uh, direct uh, equation, try to modify. Then the uh, first one is a direct type mass M, and then CPT breaking term and pi T violating, but C and CPT preserving mass term up here. And therefore, this second term is very important. Uh, this one. This one is a uh, C, CP, CPT breaking. Therefore, we are going to use this second term to generate the neutrino anti neutrino mass split. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, the, uh, if you remember the uh, uh, white man function for the free scalar field, uh, this one, and uh, this structure, if you replace momentum and coordinate, precisely the, our home factor. So, uh, this is a so-called distribution. Therefore, at least this is well defined as a distribution. But if you take the uh, difference, then this uh, FP, this is the mass splitting term, has a very good behavior, as I show later. And for example, if you take this one as a iteratively again, then P0 is set to MD. Then second one gives rise to the mass splitting, and this last term is a gauge tra say, chiral transformation transformed away. Then we get to the neutrino uh, mass splitting. This is a piety uh, violating term. But anyway, this is a relatively well behaved function. Um, and uh, we are assuming that, uh, as I mentioned, uh, CPT break is very small, so if you solve it literally, iteratively, then you get this kind of structure. Okay? Therefore, uh, neutrino mass m plus minus is a direct mass and plus minus f. This is a pi t variety, so we transform it away by the uh, chiral transformation. So in this way, neutrino anti neutrino mass splitting is incorporated in the standard model by the Lorentz invariant non-local CPT breaking mechanism without spoiling the SU2 helix U1 gauge symmetry. And also Higgs particle uh, itself has a tiny C, CP, CPT violating company. Then if you do the evaluation on this one in more detail, then you can write on this way. And this L is a, a locality uh, length. Mu is a, some parameter. And mu L square has a dimension of mass. And uh, I, I'm going to choose L is an uh, object of the Planck scale now. Therefore, L is very small. Then you can see that this is a quantity inside the curly bracket. I give the just a constant like this. So from this, you can see that the, you know, our theory is uh, given right to the different mass. Namely, this, uh, this gives only the positive P0, this one. But this is a time-like constraint. So this combination is a Lorentz invariant. And this gives the only negative solution. And we generate the mass splitting. Therefore, in the often the uh, very simplified model of uh, the uh, CPT breaking and uh, mass splitting, people often use this one, but we derive it from the non-local uh, CPT breaking interaction. Namely, we start from this one and uh, we uh, derive this kind of very simple uh, mass splitting. So 
from now on, on the phenomenological analysis, I use this very simple uh, expression. Therefore, Newton and anti-Newton mass splitting are uh, given uh, by this formula. And also, just uh, this uh, comment on the uh, parity violating uh, mass time. But uh, after we are going to transform it away, so uh, I'm not going to uh, extend this. But uh, this is not so bad behavior. Uh, except for Peter Gudero, uh, a bit uh, hard to But otherwise, it's again very, very defined quantity. And the mass splitting is here. Therefore, uh, to summarize the idea, what we did is uh, that Newton mass splitting is uh, by adding this one, namely Lorentz invariant non local form factor. And uh, uh, because of these two delta functions, the, uh, mostly cancel the infinite time like volume effect. If we have only single delta function, then the uh, uh, delta function means uh, the, uh, along the right cone, we have the infinite the kind of volume effect. But if you subtract it, then effectively, non locality limits within the uh, fluctuation at the tip of the right cone uh, characterized by the length scale L, which we choose to be a uh, Planck length. So by taking the L is a Planck length, and the middle parameter, the mass split has this form. Because of one over m square, uh, looks like the gravitational effect, uh, uh, Newton constant up here, like this. And the Newton anti Newton mass splitting of this order, for example, 10 to the minus second, uh, second and so on, uh, is uh, reproduced. Uh, by the way, uh, this mass splitting is uh, about 20% of the observed mass, was like that. But we need this capital M of the order of 10 to the 8 to 10 to the 9 GB. And that is a kind of slightly unnatural aspect of this model because uh, if you take this M as, a, say, 1 TB, then mass split is too small to be of the say, phenomenological interest. So we need this. And this splitting is not inconsistent with the Minos experiment. Also, interesting observation is that uh, Suzuki is uh, the head of the Kamran group, and also Smirnov, he's an expert of solar neutrino. Uh, both of them informed us that the sun neutrino and the Kamran anti neutrino data show a discrepancy in the neutrino mass of the 10 to the minus third electron volt, which is two sigma effect. And therefore, uh, two sigma means not so, you know, uh, you cannot trust it. But anyway, this is a kind of the uh, physics we can discuss. Namely, uh, because the neutrino experiments are very sensitive to the very small mass, and if we, therefore if you invent like the CPT breaking, then uh, you can test it. And then, of course, if you have the mass splitting, then you might hope that that the mass splitting may induce the baryon number uh, asymmetry. And uh, uh, for example, the, uh, if you have the uh, matter antimatter asymmetry, even at the thermal equilibrium, because mass difference. And that difference may go to the uh, chiral anomaly and the superleron, this is the idea to hope the idea of the. Uh, Anomaly is uh, the anomaly, then B minus L is preserved, B plus L is not preserved. And uh, if we do very naive way, that uh, Zerzovic did in 81, uh, this the, uh, scheme, difference, uh, induces a neutrino anti neutrino uh, the, uh, asymmetry of this order. But uh, this is very, very small. Because after all, our mass and the mass split is more or less the same. And the T is, uh, for example, electroweak scale means 100 GB or 1 TB. So this is a negligibly small. But uh, somewhat more com elaborate analysis has been done by Smirnov and his collaborator. 
And they argue, they use very detailed uh, spiral dynamics, which I don't quite understand. But anyway, the uh, result is very interesting. And their, their conclusion is that the uh, left hand side of the baryon number and uh, the uh, so called entropy or photon density is more or less the same as the uh, uh, neutrino uh, mass splitting and uh, W boson. If you take this one literally, then right hand side the object order of the 10 to the minus 12 to 10 to the minus 13. And experimentally, we need 10 to the minus 10, but still not so far away. So if this kind of very sophisticated uh, Swarelon dynamics is really working, then we may have the, uh, some interesting uh, implication of the neutrino mass spectrum, let's say, neutrino anti neutrino. And this scheme is a people call it equilibrium electronic variogenesis. Because uh, we don't need any non equilibrium as a Saharov's condition. Okay. But uh, of course, we need a CP because uh, to generate neutrino anti neutrino mass splitting, we are assuming C, CP, CPT breaking. And uh, so this is rather different. Also. And also, this one is uh, quite different from the conventional variogenesis or leptogenesis. So if this kind of uh, idea really works, then uh, this kind of scheme is also an interesting uh, scheme to, uh, to, to the, uh, generate a uh, value on symmetry. Now I come to the uh, higher order effect. As I mentioned, uh, if you split the neutrino and anti-neutrino in, in one part of the standard model, weinbaum salam model, then um, higher order effect influence the electron and the quarks and so on, whether we can make it small or not. Uh, to do it, uh, we need a certain the, uh, quantum mechanical formula. So I assume that a pass integral, naive uh, the, uh, pass integral, without worrying about the uh, non-locality, just to invert the propagator. Uh, this kind of pass integral can be derived by the uh, so-called Schrodinger's action principle, which is also based on equations of motion. But anyway, we take this under. And uh, this gamma 5 is uh, after all. Um, by the way, if you take this one, and if you make the in Minkowski space, P0 go to infinity, then they all go away, namely mass spin go away. Therefore, high energy behavior is uh, in Minkowski space, this is a very well behavior. And so, effect on the locality are mild and uh, limited, not so big. So, this is a very nice aspect, but uh, for example, in the ordinary renormalization, we often go to the Minkowski space by doing weak rotation. Then we have the sine function. And this is in Minkowski space, this is very behaved, oscillated. But if you go to the Euclidean space, then now uh, divergent. So this one, this kind of behavior uh, yeah, spoils, you know, when, when you say something small or big, that kind of argument uh, does not uh, go through if this kind of behavior appears. Therefore, the, um, in the Euclidean space, not so good. But uh, one might still argue that the higher order effect in field theory defined on Minkowski space, Minkowski space are in principle analyzed in Minkowski space. If that is the case, our propagator suggests that the ordinary normalizable behavior, our flow to it, is that. But uh, this is a, a future study, if that is uh, OK or not. So now I discuss the, uh, briefly discuss the uh, uh, mass splitting for the electron sector. Therefore, if we have the neutrino sector, as I mentioned, in momentum space, this is a, a mass splitting uh, factor, F. FP, okay. So when this term is inserted into the neutrino line in the Feynman diagram of the standard model, namely we have the uh, one loop 
self energy collection to the electron. Then electron comes in, then split into neutrino and double boson, and they absorb the double boson, come to uh, electron. And that kind of diagram. And then on the neutrino line, we are going to insert this mass splitting, and we are going to estimate what kind of mass splitting is induced in the electron sector. And this is a uh, expression. And this is written in Minkowski space. But uh, anyway, now we just took it away, the FP as a first order perturbation. Therefore, everything is defined as a conventional uh, language. Therefore, uh, uh, nice. But uh, only for FP, FP contains a step function P0 and so on. So uh, weak rotation is not so simple. Okay. But anyway, uh, based on this one, uh, without doing any detailed calculation, you can estimate that the, this is more given by this. Okay. This is a very crude estimate, but you can make estimate. Then this estimated value of the uh, electron positron mass splitting induced by the neutrino mass splitting. And if you use the neutrino mass splitting the observed of 10 to the minus first or minus second electron volt, then this estimate, because this, it contains many small factors in front, uh, electron positron splitting is 10 to the minus 20 electron volt. It's a very crude estimate. And the experimental boundary is 10 to the minus uh, second or so. And therefore, this is well below the extended boundary. And for the coke sector, uh, yeah, we expect that the, again the neutrino uh, effect is a kind of two loop effect because this mass splitting is uh, operating only the neutrino sector. Therefore, our estimate is that the, uh, probably not much different to electron mass splitting for the coke sector. And in the coke sector, K0, K0 bar, like mass splitting is very small, 10 to minus 18 GeV. But uh, because this is a GeV, this is electron bulb, so still we are safe. So our uh, conclusion uh, is that the uh, Lorentz invariant uh, non-local CPT breaking in the standard module allows uh, size of the neutrino anti mass splitting, which can be tested by oscillation experiment without introducing uh, large undesirable effects in other sectors of standard model. So far, as far as I have checked, but uh, uh, maybe more detailed analysis required. But so also a potentially interesting implication of the baryogenesis and so uh, it's interesting. Therefore, Lorentz invariant non-local CPT breaking at the Planck scale suggests a promising CPT breaking scheme for an effective field theory. Although a deeper analysis of the issue such as Unitarity is required. And uh, if you make the you know, uh, Planck scale, length scale, then at least no extra cut appears. Uh, but uh, as I mentioned, uh, weak rotation is not allowed or like that. So um, uh, this unitarity issue is an uh, important problem. Although we may argue that the, in the standard model, we don't look at the, you know, that sort of distance, but that sort of induced effect, that is more so con, uh, local uh, extra. In momentum space, just local uh, extra effect. So also, the, uh, this is uh, one, but the remaining biggest issue is this last line. Namely, origin of CPT breaking, at Planck scale itself is a classified because we have just assumed that the, I know, if assuming that the, some kind of non-local 
CPT breaking appears in the Planck scale, then what happens? And uh, that's what uh, yeah, we did our analysis. And the, uh, I have not mentioned the old references. I just uh, yeah, mentioned some of the related ones. Therefore, the, uh, in 81, uh, Zeldovich and uh, Dolgov uh, discussed the particle antiparticle mass splitting and its effect on the baryogenesis. And this is uh, a uh, smear of like that. This is what I quoted. And so I quoted these two in the middle, but the original reference are these two. But uh, the little bit assumed proton antiproton mass splitting, and therefore, say, 5 MeV proton antiproton mass splitting, then it may give the desired uh, value on a similar like that. But anyway, uh, that's the kind of thing. Also, neutron antiproton mass splitting has been discussed in the past. Uh, around 2002 or 2001, mainly in connection with this LSND experiment. Uh, because LSND experiment is uh, among the neutron experiment somewhat you know, different, shows different properties. Then people consider whether we can accommodate this one into the more standard uh, the oscillation experiment. Then, uh, if you have the very large neutron anti neutron mass splitting, then you can do it. Uh, that is uh, those uh, papers. Uh, but those papers did, did not discuss how to derive the uh, mass splitting. So, we, we show, or we discussed how to uh, derive it based on the non local uh, low length invariant. Uh, interactions. So that's all. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> now, please, we can put more discussion and uh, questions, comments. If you include the interactions with the scalar field and, and, and fermions and so on, is everything still unitary? Because it looks like uh, uh, breakdown of invariance of, uh, in, of time, time reversal, uh, that U and U dagger might not be each other's uh, inverse. I mean, uh, unitarity restoration. Yes. Well, you know, I mean, uh I am not, but if you have some idea, then that's great. But you know, I have not discussed that kind of sophisticated one, okay? But uh, what I did, uh, I took the, just the Planck length non, non locality. They were looking at the standard model that is more or less local. There were no extra cutting rule or extra cut appears. That's all what I did. But if you include some other effects, and if you uh, tend to improve the entity, that's a great. Uh, no, the, the question was to you, did you check whether uh, unitarity holds in, in the case of interactions between fermions and scalars mm -hmm. of, of the model that you wrote down? Oh, yeah. Scalars means that's the first example. The phi field. Is the one bank theorem theory also? That's what you mean that. Yeah, I think so. Uh, let me see. Yeah. Uh, I just want to ask you. Uh, you are really the expert, so. <coughs> uh, yes. For example, you know, the, uh, this kind of interaction appears, extra one. And uh, the, uh, all contains this non-local factor. The first one is a standard model, OK? This non-local delta appears everywhere. And this, I think, is particle appears. And uh, therefore, yeah, if uh, this one works, that's very nice. But you know, although it's Hamishan, therefore, very formally, you can say Hamishan and Langrangian give the formally, you know. Yeah, that, that's of course the, sta the same yeah. question, whether the Hamiltonian is Hamishan. Yeah. Yes. Oh, I see. Okay. But any this one. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. You have not? Let's say one speaker once again. Yeah.